Could you give us a little of your alto playing? Sure. Actually, this is a this is a, a kind of a special horn that um, was designed by a former student of mine. Believe it or not, a uh, uh, Pierre Pedron. It's a uh, it's a very special. It's called a uh, Dragonbird reference uh, Selmer alto. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Yeah, well, speaking of the alto saxophone, uh, one of the great things about this music has always been the mentors, the elder guys who uh, take young musicians under their wing, school them, teach them about music. And uh, you, for a number of years, had such a mentor. And could you talk to us about Phil Woods, how you met, what your relationship, and what you've learned from him? Yeah, well, Phil, um, I, I don't know if you know, there's a saxophone player in New York named Jay Rodriguez. And, and Jay and I were at performing arts high school at the same time with Bill Charlap and Justin Robinson and, and uh, Stephen Scott. And, uh, <clears throat> and so he, uh, he was, even though he was younger than me, he was studying with Paquito de Rivera. He had all these records I didn't know about. And he played me a Phil Woods record um, when I was a junior in high school, and it it just kind of blew my mind. And so I decided somehow I had that that epiphany moment that sometimes young players do, and I, I literally thought to myself, "Oh, that's why I'm playing this instrument." Um, I was studying the, the Charlie Parker Omni book and playing the solos, but I didn't really have the records. And some of them, when I heard them, they were old, scratchy records. I didn't really understand why it was great yet. When I heard Phil, it completely opened the door to me. And then I heard Charles McPherson live, who also completely blew my mind. His, it, Charles is another guy that was a, uh, a big influence on me and a, and a big hero of mine. But I, I pursued Phil for several months, most of a year, and I kept asking him for lessons. And I told him my teacher was a, was a, a great uh, Staten Island legend, a guy named Cesar DeMauro. And Phil said, oh, man, you couldn't have a better teacher than Cesar. I learned a lot from him. He's a great man. And so I kept coming and said, well, could I give you a tape? And, you know, I was just basically pestering him. He finally just looked at me like, well, here's my card. you got to pay me whether you can play good or not, you know. Call my wife and we'll hook it up. So he was kind of annoyed, but I think maybe I sort of won him over with my persistence. And, I, you know, those first few lessons were, it was such a great experience. I, I wish everybody could have this moment where you got a hero and you actually get to hang with that guy. Um, and I'm I'm really lucky because I had a I had a lot of that I had I had a number of people that mentored me but Phil, you know I, I went there and the lessons would we they would stretch he'd cook Phil's a great cook actually I mean he's really into food and you know uh, and I think when things changed it was the third or fourth lesson and the great Bud Johnson had just passed away the night before and Bud along with Zoot and Al were kind of mentors to Phil at a certain time in his life. And Phil, he was just beside himself. He was heartbroken. He and Tim Parker picked me up at the bus station out in uh, Stroudsburg, and Tim said, Bud well, Johnson died last night. We tried to call you and cancel. I, I hadn't, I wasn't living at home at that point, and, uh, you know, I was 17, and I was staying with a friend quite a bit, and uh, I didn't get the message, so I just showed up. And he spent the whole day with me, and I really, I got something really incredible from him that day. Uh, and he said it, but he also showed it to me. He said, look, man, if you're not trying to change the world with this music, I'm not interested. You know, now that can sound like a little overblown, or, but he meant it, you know. And I, I just love that he said that, because it's like, yeah, isn't that what we all want to do on some level, even if it's just... 
a little piece of it. Um, if we don't love the music that much, why are we doing it? Um, he threw scores at me. He said, you better be able to follow the score of Petrushka. I'm putting the record on. Show me where we're at. Play me, this, play me the start of right to spring, right, the Rights of Spring on the piano. Play me Bird Solo Break on a Night Tunisia, which I kind of I kind of half got and half didn't. Uh, you know, but he kept, you know, he said, write me a rondo. I mean, it was all day of just, like, do this, do that. And somewhere about, like, 7 or 8 o'clock at night, like, Steve Gilmore came over, and I think, you know, he kind of surveyed the situation. And, you know, Steve is uh, Phil's longtime bass player, and I think I was exhilarated and exhausted at the same time. And Phil finally looked at me, and he said, I'm taking you in. I'm taking one more of you young cats in. Don't let me down and don't get cocky. I said, okay, okay, I promise, you know. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, I was 17 and, you know, I'm now 47. So it's almost 30 years, I think, since I took my first lesson or around 30 years and I'm still learning, you know, uh, certainly from Phil and still learning just in general. Uh, last time I played with him was about a year ago. We did two alto gig at Birdland in New York. And, um, you know, he said to me at that time, he said, look, man, I've seen some great guys, some geniuses come through and burn out, but I want to try to emulate Benny Carter. I want to be playing great into my 80s. And he's doing it. You know, and I'm, it's like, it sounds a little funny for me to say, but I'm also really proud of him because he's been so good to me, so generous to me, He's fought through a lot, he's fought through some health issues, and he's still playing his ass off. You know, and I just, you, you got to love that. I mean, in his 80s, and he's a, he's, he's a representative of something that I always talk to young musicians and my students about. Like, if you can go around and be a, around a guy like that, you know, the people that I always talk about, like Doc Cheatham, Clark Terry, Benny Carter, you know, Mel Lewis, Eddie Locke. I mean, guys I got to be around a little bit or, you know, I, I mean, it's that essence of what the music is. Go hear them, but also go talk to them. Go hang around them. Um, and one thing that Phil taught me, he taught me a lot. He said, look, you're, you're going to have to pass this on, too. And so I always felt a kind of like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm 19, I'm getting to play with Eddie Shambly and or Percy France or Harold Owsley every Saturday afternoon at Sweet Basil's, or I'm playing with Doc Cheatham on Sundays, and I'm getting to play with, you know, all these, like Mel Lewis and Clark Terry and uh, Roy Eldridge and I, like I don't know how I fell into this, but I better really like listen and learn and pay attention and assimilate it and hopefully you know bring it forward because these guys are I mean they're national treasures frankly and um, and I was just so honored and lucky to be around them uh, and and Phil was um, you know he was the guy that that really he opened a lot of doors for me and, and set the bar for me. And when I went and had a lesson with, you know, he said, you better come back and know it. You better sound good. I was like, all right, I'm going to work hard, you know, because <laughs> if, if somebody that you love and respect says that to you and you're all excited to work with them, you definitely show, you don't show up next time like, yeah, I didn't get to it. Yeah. You say, all right, there's a the door. <laughs> get out. Yeah. You know, I mean, he was tough, but it, like most teachers I had, they were tough, but they cared about you. Yeah, and uh, it was a great combination. So I, I uh, yeah, I, I, he's like, uh, I couldn't have, I couldn't have been more blessed to have somebody in my life like Phil. Yeah, Phil's a remarkable man. He's still a remarkable player, and he's a man of tremendous integrity. Yeah, and that's how he's lived his life, and uh, his music uh, represents that. And 